Thank you for joining us on the Real Biblical Application Podcast. Today, it's just me again, just delivering a short little uh, message. My goal with all this is not to discourage or anything, uh, but really to challenge people to look at their life and to apply scripture to their life where they may be lacking. Uh, I think that should always be our goal when we look at the Bible, to study it out, determine what it's talking about, and how we can apply it to our life. And so today, I thought it would be good to maybe talk about biases or prejudices, especially when it comes to preaching the gospel to others. Uh, Whether we know it or not, whether we are aware of our biases or aware of our prejudices, we all are going to have these biases and prejudices in our life to some degree. And sometimes we can favor a certain attribute over another or a type of person over another. Or um, we may look at sin in general. Maybe we look at one sin as worse than another. And so naturally, since this sin in our mind is worse than another sin, We see someone who has committed this worst type of sin on a human scale, and we say this is a lower class person, or we might develop some kind of bias against someone who has committed such an act that you couldn't maybe even imagine uh, committing yourself. And so what does this mean? You know, Christians should always favor light over darkness. They should always favor righteousness over unrighteousness. But it's one thing to hate sin, and it's a completely different thing to hate the sinner. And I know that sounds extreme. Um, It's one thing to dislike sin, and it's another thing to dislike a sinner. Maybe that softens the blow for you a little bit, but I think you get the point. Um, God, whenever he looks down at his creation, without Christ, he sees a world full of those who have transgressed uh, the laws and the commandments that he's set forth for his creation to live by. And so thanks be to Christ for the fact that we are able to be washed and sanctified and, and justified by our Lord For the sins that we have committed, we've been forgiven, we've been pardoned if we are faithful to him. And and this is a wonderful, wonderful blessing we all have. And one that we can all take part of, every single one of us. So if you're listening to me and uh, you've lived a pretty squeaky clean life by your own standards or, or even by the standards of God, if you've lived a pretty good life, and you've really done your best to follow God's commandments, thanks to God that you can be forgiven of those few times that you have sinned. And uh, I encourage you to keep on striving to live the life that God has set forth for you. If you're listening to me and you have lived a life in complete uh, rebellion against God, if you have transgressed the law of God at every turn, just know that you have the same right to be forgiven of your sins, the same ability, I might say. That might be a better way of saying it. You have the same ability to be forgiven of your sins. And whenever you're forgiven of these sins, you're not looked at as a second-class Christian. There is no second-class Christian. You are equal to the one who maybe has been living this uh, righteous or faithful life their entire life. That being said, neither party has lived their life to perfection. And so both are guilty of sin, and both would meet the same destruction and the same fate if it weren't for the blood of Christ. And prejudice in general has been an issue for a long time, even back to biblical times. Um, you see these uh, 
we see favoritism among the Jews and Gentiles, among male and female, and so on and so forth. Maybe a little bit of foreshadowing of where I'm going with this. Uh, but we see this in Scripture multiple times. But Romans says that God is not a respecter of persons. He is not one to show favoritism to another. And Christ's mission was not to save one type of person or one group of person or anything along those lines. But instead, he was willing and is willing to save all who will submit themselves to his reign. Those who are willing to take part in Christ's kingdom and submit themselves and bow the knee to Christ. And whenever they do that, they are equal. They are all one in Christ and sons, according to promise, according to Galatians three twenty six through 29, it says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, and you are all Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we all get to take part in this great promise without any type of distinction uh, or uh, or segregation or anything of that kind. There's no distinction between any of these things. We are all one in Christ. And so our prejudices and our biases unchecked in our life can bring about sin in our life because we are drawing lines and we are uh, forming these biases that are not one with our with our king or our father. They don't look at these people this way. This can have a detrimental impact, not only on us as individuals, but also on our congregation. This is something that all of us need to be examining in our own life, especially when it comes to spreading the gospel and equally with those who have already obeyed the gospel and may maybe we interact with on a regular basis within our congregations to make sure we aren't showing favoritism or par partiality towards those who are part of the same body that we are. We're all part of one body. It would be silly for one part of the body to show prejudice or bias against another part of the body when they are all part of the same body. And so it is with the human race. When Christ sent out his disciples and he gave them these marching orders, this great commission, they were to go and preach the gospel to every nation. That's to all people. The gospel does not show prejudice or bias in any way. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's able to pierce the heart of any man or any woman, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done. And God has made us all of one blood. And thus the gospel can have the same effect on all. And so it doesn't matter what someone's skin color is or their hair color or whether they have freckles or not or what their nationality is or their socioeconomic factors that may come into their uh, life and who they are as a person or the degree or the amount of sin that they have in their life or their sexual preferences or their job title or their education level. None of these things matter as far as the gospel is concerned. If the gospel is preached to all these different genres of people, all people are different. It can have its desired effect. And so Christ is not a person who is looking at where these people are. 
when he decides whether they can be saved or not. He's looking at where they're willing to go, whether they are willing to submit themselves to his reign. Christ does not discriminate against people. We do. We do that, not Christ. Do we preach the gospel to those who are different than us? I think that's really something that we all need to internalize. The church at Corinth was a church that was full of diversity. But Paul told these people in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor uh, effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. But pay attention to this part. But such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the spirit of our God. What a beautiful verse or set of verses that this is. I think it's important with this verse we, we notice the diversity in the church in Corinth. They had fornicators, they had idolaters, they had adulterers, they had homosexuals, they had thieves, they had people who were covetous, they had people who were drunkards, revilers, swindlers. Look at that diversity in this congregation. congregation. The gospel was able to have effect on all these types of people. And so when we look at our own congregations, do we see this type of diversity? Do we see people who were once fornicators and idolaters and adulterers and homosexuals or, and thieves and covetous and drunkards and revilers and swindlers? Do we see these type of people in our congregations? This is something for all of us to ask ourselves. Do we see these types of people? Am I withholding the gospel from anyone? Am I withholding the gospel from people who are different than me? Am I withholding the gospel from people who may be homosexuals or people who may be thieves or people who may be homeless or people who may be covetous or uh fornicators or whatever it may be am i withholding the gospel from any type of person and if i am what am i going to do to change that if their soul and it is of the same value as ours then we should feel the same desperation to spread the gospel to a homosexual as we do to a straight person or someone with freckles as opposed to someone without freckles or someone with, you know, blonde hair as, as we are with someone with brown hair or someone who is white as just as much as someone who is Hispanic. This is what living life without prejudice would be. And I do understand that there can be a certain discomfort to preaching the gospel to people who are different. I understand that completely. But that doesn't mean that we should be okay with that in our life. We shouldn't be okay with having a prejudice in our life or a bias in our life that might prevent us from being effective gospel preachers. The message, the gospel, is for all. And it can have its desired effect on any type of person. That's important for us to realize. And for us to complete the mission that Christ has set forth for us, 
we will preach the gospel to all. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to listen to the Real Biblical Application podcast. If you have any questions about the discussion that was had today, please email me at realbiblicalapplication at gmail.com. And remember, keep on learning and finding ways to apply the Word of God to your life.